Of course, this controversy raged in the 1990s about where people who were coming forth with memories of childhood sexual abuse recovering repressed memories, or were they creating false memories? And I, you know, I think our current understanding on this is, is that it was a little bit of both, but there was certain, certainly a lot of <laughs> false memory creation going on, that a lot of the memories that were coming out of therapy in the 80s and the 90s resulted from the use of overly aggressive kind of suggestive techniques in certain kinds of therapy where, where people were either being hypnotized or were being encouraged to imagine things that might have happened that we now know, particularly from the work in the last few years um, that a bunch of us have been doing on the relationship between memory and imagination, that that's really about the last thing you would ever want to do in searching for, for memories just give someone f free reign to their imagination because it has the potential to create false memories. I once, when I was doing a story some years back, witnessed this kind of, you know, well, I did a story on, on sexually abused children and I sort of was very suspicious of the therapy, but just suspicious. But then I did another story on aut autistic kids mm. and uh, I, was, I was there for the therapy sessions. And this was an there was a particular therapy used that involved holding the, the children, this whole holding therapy. And then some of the mothers uh, said their children, these were severely, profoundly autistic children, said that their children were writing beautiful poetry and the mothers were like holding the hands of the child. And I knew it was the mothers that was right. It was, it was incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to see this, and in a way it was, it was tragic. Mm -hmm. But I knew the children weren't really writing, and they were. It became almost a competitive thing because I worked on the story for several weeks. So I went to several therapy sessions. The, the mothers almost became competitive with each other. Mm -hmm. It was. A, it was. Extra, but so a lot of times I think therapy can overdo it, and, and I, certainly with the sexual abuse cases, yes, I think that you know the, these memories can be encouraged. And you know, it's interesting that. Looking back on some of the, that therapy from the 90s, one, one of the things very relevant to our conversation today that at least some therapists encouraged in the search for memories that they thought were repressed was reviewing old photographs. And so that gets back into right, our right. earlier discussion. Yet they can act as retrieval cues sometimes to uh, help you recall something that, uh, that uh, actually happened that you don't remember, but as we saw in the slime experiment, just the presence of a photograph for reasons we don't really understand can... Because some... it wasn't even a photograph of the slime. That's right. It wasn't even a photograph of the slime. It was, it was just a, a, just a photograph case. that related to the yeah. context that somehow it liberated these people to feel so, so as though... That can, you, can you imagine what suggestive therapy would be? Exactly. Especially if it involves physical <laughs> touching. You know, for children. Yes. Uh, so I think ph photography is relevant to, to that, that uh, contentious issue, which thankfully now has kind of died down.